Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reconstruct a cone beam CT image using the CT, reconstruct, CT, CT reconstruction plugin in Dragonfly, the latest version, version 2022.2. .2. For the first step, let's load the projection images. So in Dragonfly, select file, import image files. And now you can open a folder or add images. We select add and go to our uh, directories. You can see we have from 0, point, uh, from 0, 0, 0, 0001 to until 2635 TIFF. We can select all of those images. One of them represent uh, one projection at a certain rotation angle and say open. Now we will have all of those images loaded in the image loader. You can select one of the tip files, see profile, and the image will show on the right. Okay, so now we have all the our images loaded. We can go to next. Image sampling, image spacing. We don't need to choose anything over here. Transform information. So all the informations are correct. The detectors are 1,677 by 2,000 hat and we have 2,635 slices. We can go finish. I didn't go much details um, to the ORS image loaders, but if you want to know more information about how to load image files, uh, we have another tutorial video for that. I'll put the link below into the description part. This may take some time. Okay, I may cut some of the times directly go to the end. All right, we have our data set loaded. Go to X-Way plan. Um, this is a, a steering arm data set acquired on a Nikon Micron CT imaging system. Um, I'd like to thanks. I would like to thanks Morgan uh, Lettner for sharing this data with us. And as you can see, we have this um, image. Uh, detector plan on the XY plan and also the rotation axis is along the Y axis. Okay, so this is our um, kind of requirement. And if when you loaded your image, it's not uh, on that orientation, you'd have to select your object on the right, right click, go to modify and transform, select invert. So now you could either invert X, Y, or Z axis, or do a axis transformations so that to make sure that you have uh, the same orientation as I have over here. Okay, so the second step, we can start our city reconstruction plugin. Uh, so go to workflows. We can select City Reconstruction Beta Version. Okay, so this is a dialog for our City Reconstruction plugin. For the projection dataset, select the dataset you just loaded. Okay, our dataset has been automatically selected because this is the uh, only one. So for the third step, we need to fill out the geometry acquisition part. First, bin type. Of course, it's a combined dataset. 
And now we have a series of parameters in the acquisition parameters part. It includes a minimum angle, normally it's zero, angle step, a source to detector distance, and source to object distance. And we have on the right, detector spacing uh, on the, along the X and along the Y. The detector offset and the source offset along the X and along the Y respectively. Also the detector angle. So the first one is in plane angle and the second one is out of plane angle. Besides, we have clockwise steps. So if you check it, it's the rotation, uh, the rotation direction is clockwise. Otherwise, if you uncheck it, it's going to be counterclockwise. For the advanced acquisition parameters, we have energy, beam energy, beam current, and exposure time. For now, we don't use those parameters, but in the future, uh, they may be useful. So you could either, uh, if you know those parameters, you can just fill them by yourself. Or if your data set are from the following uh, manufacturer or vendors, you could select which vendor it is. For example, in our case, it's Nikon. And you'd have options to import from files. For Nikon, it's a... Um, Okay, I need to find my location. Okay, here is my metadata files. So for Nikon, it's a XT, XTE, KCT file. You can select it, open, and all the parameters will be automatically loaded. Also, we have other uh, vendors, SkyScan, it's in log file, or KA Imaging, it's in JSON file. Also, we have North Star Imaging. North Star Imaging requires two different uh, files. The first one is the CT acquisition technic she technical sheet. And the second one is geometry or calibration summary. They're both in RTF format. Also, Ixalom, we supported different, uh, different models from Ixalom. For example, this file is from FFCT, FF35CT. And the top one is from MU to Southend. They're both in XML format. Okay, also the last one, GE. Which is in PCA. Okay. If you are using a spe special format that you're used to, but they are not in those lists, uh, you are very welcome to send us the files and we can maybe have a special designed uh, metadata file loader for you. So you can pass the data set automatically. Okay, let's come back to our Nikon, select our files. So we have all the parameters set. Next step, choose reconstruction engine. By default, we are using RTK, FTK algorithms compute on um, GPU. Um, so FTK is a filtered back filtered back projection uh, algorithm. For the advanced parameters, you can choose what filter you want to use and also the frequency cut and truncation padding. You can also select use iterative method you have to choose number of iterations and forward projection method. Or instead of FTK, select start algorithm, which is a simultaneous algebraic uh, um, re reconstruction technique. Same thing, select back projection method and forward projection method 
and select number of projections. But still, uh, among all of those different algorithms, the FTK GPU is still recommended because it is much faster than the other iteration method, iterative method. So here we have two up, two push buttons, rotation, front rotation center, and front tilt angle. This is the geometry calibration part. I'm going to have another tutorial video to introduce more details about those two parts. But basically, they are used to find the detection, uh, detector angle and detector offset source of that parameters over here. Next, we can select what kind of preprocessings pre you want. Uh, we have different options here. By default, in the advanced options, the log filters is selected because uh, typically the projection we got, the background is uh, more brighter than the feature part. So we need to apply a log filter to have the correct um, image. But if um, your, your projection has been log filtered, you may need to uncheck this log filter here. Again, there's so much information in the preprocessing part. Uh, so I will have another video talk specifically about each of these preprocessing filters. I'm going to skip this part for now. Okay, we have um, now I think we are all set. We can go ahead compute preview. What it does is it's going to select the middle slice of your projection which is a slice 1000 for our case <clears throat> and compute a preview. So this is mainly for uh, if you don't know if your parameters are correct or if you have different sets of parameters or different reconstruction algorithms and you want to compare uh, which one gives you a better result. So you can, this way it's very fast. And once you have previews uh, computed, let's say I have multiple different previews selected here. For example, let's choose a source of set as zero, compute another preview. And now I have another, um, doesn't look very well, previews calculated. And I'm comparing, I feel like, okay, preview one for slice 1000 gives me a better result. I'd like to still use all the parameters from preview one, but I don't remember what values I put here before. So I can choose import inputs from, pre uh, import inputs from preview and select preview one. Okay. Now we have our source of setback. So this is going to work even you have your city reconstruction plugin closed and reopen. So all the parameters are gone. I can still import, say preview one and okay, they're all back. All right. So for the reconstruction, um, I like people would first choose reconstruct and load normally, but for most of the cases, the projections or the reconstruction volume will be too large for the memory limits so that uh, the reconstruction and load cannot be performed. Here we have two options. First, if we know, okay, I only want part of the projection to be reconstructed, I can crop my original data set but when cropping be careful that you crop uh, same number of slices from top and bottom to make sure that it's still in the in the middle because the top and bottom would have different uh, magnification magnifications otherwise 
uh, you'd have to put correct detector offset along the y-axis in that case to make sure you have a correct reconstruction. So normally you just crop uh, the same number of slides from top and bottom. For example, the original one is 2000 slides. Let's have a 200 slices in the middle. So I'm going to have from 901 to 1100 slices. So this, uh, there's a box over here. Show which part you were cropping. Let's say apply. Okay, now I have my cropped data set here. Uh, I can change my projection data set to the cropped one. And now try reconstruct and load. It's working. It's taking some time. All right, the reconstruction is done. I have my data set published. It says cropped, reconstructed over here. Okay, this is part of my steering arm. You can see along the XC plan. This is like the preview plan we have. Or oh, a different angle XY plan. Oh, let's see it in 3D. Um, we can choose window leveling to rescale it or remove the uh, background part. Okay, this is part of my steering arm. Looks nice. Okay, the other option we have is we can use the reconstruct and save. Before let's change it to our original data set can say reconstruct and save and we need to create a folder it's going to put all the results over there select folder okay now it's working so what this reconstruction uh, and a reconstruct and save option does is it's going to slip your full data set into different slabs according to the memory uh, memory limits your machine have and then it's going to re reconstruct one slab by slab. Once each of the slab is reconstructed, the reconstructed volume will be output in the format of a, a multiple TIFF files. So one slice for each of the, uh, one image for each of the slice. So by the end, we should have 2000 TIFF files um, saved in the folder we just uh, uh, point to. And once it's done, we can use the same way uh, when we, as we import the projection files to import those reconstructed images. Okay, this may take some time.
Okay, the reconstruction was saved. Press OK. Let's try load it. File. Import image files. Open folder. Temple. This is my folder. So we have our reconstruction zero to one uh, one thousand nine hundred ninety nine. So that's in total two thousand images. Take one of them, super view. Okay. central one okay um the one on the edge may the reconstruction may not as good as the central one because of the angle is very big and we don't have full information for that slice because it's on the edge okay let's see next finish Again, the loading may take some time. Here it is. Let's do the same thing. <clears throat> Change the window leveling. Remove the background region. Okay, here we go. Our steering arm. Okay, that is all for today's video. See you in the next video.